the god of death is the lord of sex at the same time. What do you mean? It's a marvelous thing. One after another, you can see these gods. Gede, the god of uh, the, the death god of the Haitian voodoo, is also the sex god. Wotan uh, had one eye covered and the other uncovered, you see, and uh, at the same time was the lord of, of life. Osiris, the lord of death and the lord of the generation of life. It's a basic thing. That which dies is born. You have to have death in order to have life. Now, this is the uh, origin thought, really, of the head hunt. In, uh, in Southeast Asia, and particularly in the Indonesian zone, the head hunt, uh, right up to now, has, has been a, a sacred act. It's a sacred killing. Unless there is death, there cannot be birth. And uh, a young man before he can be permitted to, to marry and become a father, must have uh, gone forth and had his kill. What does that say to you? Well, that every generation has to die in order that the next generation should come. As soon as you beget or give birth to a child, you're the dead one. The child is the new life, and you are simply the protector of that new life. Your time has come, and you yeah, know Yeah, well, that's why there is this uh, deep psychological association of begetting and dying. Isn't there some relationship between what you're saying and this fact that a father will give his life for his son, a mother will give her life for her child? There's a wonderful paper. I don't know whether you knew that I would love to have talked to this point. <laughs> There's a wonderful paper by Schopenhauer, who's one of my three favorite philosophers, um, called The Foundation of Morality. There he asks exactly the question that you've asked. How is it that a human being can so participate in the peril and, or pain of another that without thought, spontaneously, he sacrifices his own life to the other. How can this happen? That what we normally think of as the first law of nature, namely self-preservation, is suddenly dissolved <clears throat> and there's a breakthrough. Uh, in Hawaii, uh, some four or five years ago, there was an extraordinary adventure that uh, represents this problem. Uh, there's a place there called the Pali, where the winds from the north, the trade winds from the north, can break you through a great ridge of rocks and, and of mountain, and they come through with a great blast of wind. The people like to go up there to get their hair blown around and so forth, or to commit suicide, you know, like jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, the police car was on its way up the early little road that used to go up there, and they saw just beyond the railing that... Uh, keeps the cars from rolling over, a uh, young man uh, actually clearly about to jump and prepare himself to jump. Police car stopped. The policeman on the right jumps out to uh, grab the boy and uh, grabs him just as he jumped and was himself being pulled over and would have gone over if the second cop hadn't gotten around, grabbed him and pulled the two of them back. There was a long dis or description of this. It was a marvelous thing in the, in the newspapers at that time. And um, the policeman uh, was asked, uh, why didn't you let go? I mean, you would have lost your life. And you see what happened to that man. This is what's known as one-pointed meditation. Everything else in his life dropped off. Uh, his duty to his family, his duty to his job, his duty to his own career, all of his wishes and hopes for life just disappeared. And he was about to go. And his answer was, I couldn't let go. If I had, and I'm quoting almost word for word, if I had let that young man go, I could not have lived another day of my life. How come? Schopenhauer's answer is, this is the breakthrough of a metaphysical realization that you and the other are one. And that the separateness is only an effect of the temporal forms of sensibility of time and space. And our true reality is in that unity with all life. It is a metaphysical truth that becomes spontaneously realized because it's the real truth of your life. Now, you might say the hero is the one who has given his uh, physical life, you might say, to some order of realization of that truth.